What up, YouTube? Ham Radio QSO here. And like any good ham radio operator, I am up late. It is currently 1.30 a.m. on a Saturday night, which would make it early Sunday morning. But I'm not up doing radio. What I'm doing is getting ready to put together an infed for my QRP radio. The Zagu 106, which is this radio, will be the radio that I'll be using for field day. And I've got other infed antennas but they're made out of bigger components and I'm choosing components slightly different for this for this infed mainly for testing and uh, cause I like to build infeds but anyway uh, the cores that I used to use are the FT24043's they're a big old core I've got one back here but I've got it as a choke right now so but I went with this one this is a smaller one it is a FT140 43 or or 170 I'll put it in the description here what it is so I'm going to use this now I've looked at this core on paper and on paper it's it's really really good it's uh, offers a lower SWR than the 240 cores and I've seen people build NVES using these but I've not seen an NVES built using these that the antenna was used for QRP. So it takes some really small magnet wire. You might be able to see how small that is. This is 28 gauge, really small stuff. Apparently it can hold up to 10 watts. So we're getting ready to find out. But what I'm gonna do is, when you build in feds, you always have your primary turns and your secondary. The primary are two wires together. Now, I watched a video where a guy used a, a smaller a smaller cord than this one. It was a 50, I think, or something like a 150 or something. I don't know. But he used a smaller, smaller cord, and he went three turns on the primary and 18 for the secondary. And uh, it worked out really well. He had great performance with it. Uh, QRP uh, contacts all over the country but I upgraded to well I didn't I can't say upgraded I switched to this core because it looked really good on paper but what I'm putting it in is these 3d boxes 3d printed boxes this is a printed out of PTG material super tough I put the holes in I used Tinkercad to uh, modify this box just a little bit toroid mounting plate which we'll probably use but we'll have to figure out how to attach this toroid to it because you can see it is much smaller uh we should be able to get some zip ties around it regardless but we'll, we'll make sure it's secure and uh yeah so a whole package it, you guys have seen videos before but I've got a whole bunch of I got a whole bunch of hardware in here and I got to get busy because field day is about 10 days away so I've got to get this thing together oh but I did pick one of these up because I'm gonna start building some antennas I plan on building a lot of antennas and I need to test and tune these antennas and not have to rely on other people to do that so i got me a nano vna i got the one with the four inch screen bigger screen so i can do my own testing once i get these antennas built but anyway i'm using the iphone today I'm not quite sure how that's going to turn out i've got a separate mic you can probably see it here it's the road smart lab but uh i'm going to try to record some of this but i won't use the iphone i've got uh, a logitech c90 camera on top of the computer screen that I'm going to put down somehow over the desk so you guys can watch me do this. Then once we get this thing built, we'll be able to take it outside, hook the hard line up to it, hook the radio up to it, and go ham. No pun intended. But anyway, I got to get busy, so see you guys in a second.
Okay, so in the video I watched, a guy bought a kit and it calls for three primary turns. Didn't say anything about twisting the wire together. Directions didn't say it, so he didn't do it. So I'm not going to do it. Whatever happens to the wire when we wrap it, that's just what happens to the wire, but I'm not going to purposely twist it. So there's one, two. Three. Right. Three turns. It looks good. We don't have any weird twists going on. So now we gotta wrap 18 more turns around this dude. And once we get it all wrapped, we can straighten everything out. So I'm gonna get to turn wrapping. Three turns. Looks good. We don't have any weird twists going on. So now we gotta wrap 18 more turns around this dude. And once we get it all wrapped, we can straighten everything out. So I'm gonna get to turn wrapping.
All right, so now all we got to do is check for continuity between all this. Get my glasses on so I can see.
All right, that is done. You know, I built a couple of these in-fed antennas using bigger cores. First time I used a small core, but we got it done. That's what it looks like. Get you a better look at it there. I'm not the best solder person in the world, but it'll do. I've got to get some uh, nuts for these bolts. These little screws here. He didn't give me the nuts. If he did, I don't have them. I don't know where they're at. So I'm gonna temporarily use these black ones you see here. They're a little bit long. I'm gonna put another one in this corner to hold it until I get back to the hardware store and get the nuts for those. But all in all, it turned out pretty good. It uh, it works. Uh, checked it with a continuity meter and we've got continuity, which is we should have. Basically, you're creating a short when you test it with a continuity meter, but when it comes to RF, hey, it just works. But uh, now I gotta find some wire for this. I don't wanna use a big wire for it. I wanna use a smaller wire because that's what it's designed for. It's smaller stuff, low wattage. Big wire, I feel, would just uh, be an impedance or whatever. Might not be, it might not make a difference, but who knows. But anyway, I'm out of here. I'm gonna put all this video together and let you guys check it out. So with that, Ham Radio QSO. Hope to catch you on the air. Peace.